this is Wise Guy Jesse here, and this is going to be episode four of Mountain Blade Warband. Um, know what you guys would be thinking? It's what's happened to episode three. Well, um, they had I recorded episode one, two, and three all at once, and about 20 minutes into episode three, there was this one. Like, I don't know. I heard something. I think a window popped up, basically, saying that there was problem with the recording. And when I clicked over on the OBS to see what happened, it showed it's still recording, so I thought that it was just a mistake or something. So I end up continuing for another hour just to find out that it truly really didn't record. So yeah, episode 3 didn't exist, but what happened was I went up here and took out a mountain bandit layer over by this place that during that during in during in during sin i don't know how you pronounce it but took out a bandit place there also i went around and talked to some more of these guys of the Rodrick kingdom i end up winning a tournament over at the jellica and by winning that tournament i was able to go into the feast and meet some of the people and end up getting me more a better relationship with the people of this kingdom plus there was this one person here let's see if I could find them it was one of the ladies I met there called like Lady Tamu something with a T at the beginning let's see if I find her yeah this is her the Timothium which the only thing that happened was I said that I won the tournament in her honor, so I got plus four relationship to her. But then said that my person admired her, which made me lose two relationship with her, so I only have two now with her. And even though she is like indifferent to me, there's still if I go to the kingdom and say that I trade me up with her, they say that she or it's too soon to meet up with her after a feast but she's going to have one of her one maids try to sneak me in or something like that so I don't know if it'll happen anytime soon but that once you have something where they want you to meet them you'll have letters will be sent to you saying to come meet them as soon as you can so I might end up doing that but that basically catches you up I went around now so took out a couple bandits around the coast side and my party has one camp followers and huntresses now which those are from end up taking out a bandit group that had peasant women and or yeah peasants that were girls or something like that and then I'm just kind of leveling up because if I remember correctly these camp defenders like these people are like the little ranged people. So, Sandy's any archers right now. Um, they had, I forget if I said it earlier, but having ranged people are one of my favorite ones just because I prefer to get the higher ground, go up on the mountainside, and doesn't line up the archers and just start shooting the guys because when they try to walk up the mountain, they move very slow just lets me have more time to shoot them down and stuff but yeah that about catches up what happened right now I thinking I'm going to actually join the Rodrick kingdom for at least this moment I could just join as a mercenary at this time and get paid I think if I remember correctly um, I might be mistaking this for when I'm playing fire and sword they have an app you could be mercenaries and get paid weekly but I think that same goes for this I think you paid and so I'm trying to get on his good side um it looks like he's going off this direction they have I've noticed that whenever I talk to these people when I talk to the Rodericks they say that they're at war with these guys on um, the Surant or Surant Surridids Surridids or however you pronounce it, I don't know, I'm probably pronounce it wrong, but 
If you, want, if you talk to Rodrix, they say that they're trying to get back to their castle, which is the Wyan castle. But if you talk to the Sherids, they say they're trying to get back to their castle, which is the Jamek, the, the Jamaica castle. So I guess they're both claiming this castle's on our side. I think it's just the way the game has it set up, so you could kind of seem to claim war on people. But I think I'm gonna go with Rodrix. Mostly because I haven't really, like my other game with Nords, I think I'm gonna try out Rodrix this one. I kind of like the idea of having spearmen, just because later in the game, when there's gonna be horsemen running around and knights and stuff, the spearmen are pretty useful with stabbing horses and getting those taken care of. The only thing that I'm somewhat worried about is having the spearmen they will end up not being able to stab as well if something's like up close in front of them sometimes. But just because I'm in the Rodrick Kingdom doesn't mean I can I don't have to or I'm just stuck with Rodrick people. I could easily run up here to these little villages up in the Serum or Swadia and get some of their kind of people having um I forget what there's are the the infantry I think is more what they are with swords and stuff like that. They have Nords, I don't know I remember them are axes. So Yeah, I might end up getting some swordmen later on. Or I could just go around to some of the capital places and get the one mercenary swordsmen and stuff like that. So the only thing that I don't like about that is they you can't really level them up and whatever stuff they have since you can't level up they're stuck with what they have and so I don't really like it for that but sometimes you could find that people they can be much cheaper than trying to level these guys up and like sitting there at uh, one training field for several days or game days trying to do this but anyways, yeah, right now, let's go follow the king from, I guess, the head of the pack, since he moves much slower than we do at the moment. But, um, I, they had, just before I end the episode, I did talk to each of these people. So, when they do get into a battle, I should be able to help join them. But, just in case... I think I actually have to declare war on the or the Seridids. So to declare war on them, basically the only thing I have, to, or it's not really declaring war, but the only thing I have to do is I have to attack uh, farmers or something really simple like that. The only thing that I'm worried about is the Mathrid. She's supposed to be one of those people who is like all about honor, I think. So, let's see. Okay, so she's born overseas in Nordland. Already saw most of this stuff. Okay, well, went through it too fast, but it didn't really help out much. But, anyways, I think I'm just gonna go up here and having a group of 30 people, I'm just going to find like a little group of five villagers, I think and try to take him out real fast. Hopefully none of the Serrated War or Lords are out and about nearby or else I'm probably going to be taken out real fast. He's running from someone. Any villagers at the moment. I think most of them are going to be hiding because of the deserters that are all out and about the place. Okay, well, there's a group of 10, but they are moving really fast. I don't think I'll be able to catch up to them. Yeah, I won't be able to. But 
once I do get in a fight with farmers, it should be really easy to win because the peasant women just have little nice and the guys are just called farmers and I think they only have like a pitchfork or something like that where it's like extremely it's weak. It's almost harvesting season! Oh man, I'm going to be given hell for this, but see how poor you are after I take what you got. So I've lost honor. This guy is the one guy who owns the town that you guys belong to. And the Cyrodids are now mad at me. So hopefully choosing to join the Rodex is a good thing because I can declare peace with these guys once again if I decide to not be with the Rodex. But I don't know, like sometimes I've learned the sword I'm used to fire and sword game. So I keep on thinking of all things like instead of having to to say, okay, I'm going to make peace with you. I don't know if that happens in this game. I remember you having to pay like a crap load of money and the fire and sword. Like I had to pay like I think it was I attacked the village or villager, there's like five villagers and I had to pay like definitely like five thousand to make peace with the with that attack. And so I hope not it's not like this in this game because at the moment I have like no money. And by the time I start getting money, I'm going to most likely join or join our kingdom and to good war and gain some kind of talents and gain taxes and it's like that point more. I have in my other game. I'm like I just started playing it actually right after I got done or right when I was done with episode four and I realized it or episode three and I realized it didn't record. I decided well I'm just gonna play my other place now because there's no point in trying to record anything else if it's not working. And I ended up taking out a couple more places and I realized that in the other game I have, I have like 200,000, over 200,000 deniers right now, and the only thing left to the armor I have, everything is lordly plated armor, except for the main chest plate part. That plate thing is, I think it's just called, um, like thick plated armor or something, so it's still pretty good, but it's not lordly yet, so that's the only thing I have to look for. But like everything else on there is like the high so you get is skin towards the point of the game where it's not really much fun anymore. Okay, so let's see. Um guess I'll grab cabbage. It's good to have more than one food source because then kind of boost the party morale. We have, for so having 10 people to attack and then somehow getting, what is this, like 14 weapons? It doesn't seem to add up right. But I guess they could, I guess some of the people with pitchforks could have had the sickle or a club as a backup weapon. I'm just. I didn't really pay attention to the sickles before, but it seems I should do a little bit more damage than I thought, but the weapon reach on this is pretty bad. And this weapon reach, it's average stuff. I'm used to the other game I have right now is, I think it's a war cleaver, and it has like 120 weapon reach, and it does like 49 cut damage, and so I'm just, I could go up to a a group of like 20 bandits and they're all running the line towards me and it's just one hit kills on each of them just chopping them all down so I I feel like being used to that I'm going to think nothing of it and try to charge into giant groups and then realize later that it's not going to be a good idea 
Anyways, okay, I better run out of here fast because having just attacked a group of those people, they're going to be mad. Okay, so these guys are nowhere nearby, nor it's in the, the gear. So the only thing that happens when you see these is it kind of makes you keep it kind of thing to keep in mind if I think it's more useful for if you're trying to make your own kingdom because when you see this it's saying how they're in peace but sometimes when you see someone's declare war on this person you could also declare war on them and then it'll be like two against one or if a couple of empires are attacking the same person it could be three against one so it one of the things that kind of keeps it useful where you could Make sure that what you're doing is you kind of like have the upper hand, I guess. I wonder where this guy's going. I wonder where the king and all of them went. They, they're slow, but they shouldn't be that slow. Let's find out. We'll talk to this guy. One of the things I like about this one is or wait, no matter what I was thinking. In this, sometimes I've noticed that you could go to him and you say, "Where's the location of this person?" And they'll tell you. But sometimes you'll be like a wild goose chase kind of thing, where they'll say, "Okay, it's this place," and you run over there and you find out they're not there. And I gotta figure out where this place is at. I think it's over this way because this it's about being. Attack or no, oh, that place was the one I was being attacked. I have no idea where it's set. Did you see this place? Because that's awfully far away and completely opposite direction of where the enemies will be at over here I highly doubt they'll be way out this way but I don't know they have in fire and sword they have the computer people in that will recognize forts that have less people and they will attack it but that becomes annoying because like how our kingdom is based over here and fire and sword if this was to be fire and sword they would recognize a fort way across the map like way up here where no one's at or where our territory is nowhere near and they'll try to take it out and it makes it kind of annoying because once you start playing a game and like a couple like a about I think it's one year of game time into it you'll the whole place will go from where you could see like where people have distinct areas like how lords have this area the gear have that area they have this area stuff like that and that it looks in fire sword it looks as if they just got tossed in a blender and it just all over the place they just i don't know they all start taking out different forts they like, they'll go running all the way over here to take out that fort while these guys go way down there to take out that fort and it makes it kind of hard to defend when you don't really have a distinct area to be at. Here's that one thing I was talking about earlier, but just saying that they're going to reclaim that. Since I'm not part of the alliance, normally I could go and click on it, and there would be a third option saying to a company, which you just basically it speaks what it is it you just follow along beside them and you move at the same speed as they go 
so then it makes it so you don't have to keep on clicking up ahead and clicking 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 to move or save company and then you go AFK and just let it continue to go but I'm going to ask again where the king's at where is Dibian? These names are so weird. Or at least weird to me out. No, maybe in other country areas it makes more sense or something. Oh, there's Divian. What the? Oh, uh, this is what I'm talking about in like mountain or fire and sword. They go way the hell down there to go and fight. Like they're just going to raid a little village. I mean, like I guess those two are looted. That one's not looted, and that one's not looted. But they completely skip it to go all the way down there. That's probably why it's supposed to be considered rich. So I better make my way down there, but carefully, since I've already pissed off the serdids. And I, my one men are not really suited up for taking out any large armies, because some of these I noticed that some of the armies, or most of the armies, will actually have like people that are trained as high as they can go. The only good thing that I have is that my guys run at a speed faster than what what some of the smaller or some of the larger armies will go. Hoping that there's no one in that castle that will come after me. If someone does, then luckily I'm close enough to this place that if I continue to run, most likely catch up with them. Okay, there's our group. Let's go yell at this guy. So what's he thinking? Okay, well, let's just follow him and see where he's planning on going. I don't know. He's hopefully he doesn't get all weird and like I don't know if it's a bug or something, but I know some of the other ones. Some of the other times when I played, and like I once again, in Fire Sword is where it's gonna come from. I know it's kind of a different game, but there was some times where I also noticed in this one too, where the king will assemble his army, have hundreds of people, like they're perfectly fine with taking out a little fort like one of those, but he assembles them all just to guard them as he raids a city or a town. and so he gets money, which he's a computer player, so all of the items he has, he basically has unlimited stuff, so there's no point of it really. But to, I guess, make the enemy mad, I guess it is kind of a way to gain them come out their safety of their kingdoms and stuff. They'll, they really want to protect their place and make sure they're getting their one money, so actually go and protect it. I can see someone off in this direction. There's a party in there, 64-ish. So I do not want to run too far from the group. And apparently he doesn't want to trade take on this group. I don't blame him. It's all army of a couple hundred guys standing there. I would probably run away. I really hope this guy does take out a castle like that one or something. If he takes out, like, right now towards the beginning of the game, it's kind of hard to take out castles because each castle has like 150 to 200 people in them. And kingdoms will have 300 to 400, and I've seen some with 500, but 
I think that's sort of later on if you stack up a whole bunch of people in one kingdom. But it's kind of hard to take them out because right now some of these people will only have like 50, 60, 70 ish. But later on, I'm quite sure these guys that have like 70 and 60, I'm quite sure they're going to have like 100, 150. They will get really large armies all of a sudden. And that king. He is traveling with actually, even though it's 200, he's traveling with a really small party. They had the kings normally travel with 300, 400. I just had in on the other war band game that I was playing. I, me and my like three of our group or three of our lords from the Nord Kingdom took out the Sultan of the, the Karagids. And he had like 560 people with him. So this game will probably, it won't surprise me if the other guys end up having that much too. But like once you take out a fort or something. Okay, so here comes a battle. So since I have declared war on the guys, I could actually join the king. <laughs> oh, this doesn't seem that fair. <laughs> I could go order my guys to attack without me, but then they'll get killed pointlessly most of the time. I don't know, with 610 people, there's a small chance of that happening. Here we all are. I think I'm in the way. There goes my men. My brave little guys that have, like, no armor on. And then use these guys with veteran spearmen that's what my guys will most likely will be like later on when they're like all the way up I think that's the highest you can go in the spearmen rank my brave guys charging in just to be killed oh he got the idea run away run away can't believe I missed So one guy did die, and it was a trained spearman. Well, wow, kind of sucks. This guy's happy to see me here. That guy escaped. Does it surprise me? Capture him, and we'll capture him. And looks like we could actually upgrade to a trained crispman. This ends up having a shield, which I guess is somewhat useful. Okay, and then my person, let's see, um, right now I have, what's that, 11 intelligence, um, I'm thinking of maybe upgrading it, I'm not sure, if I upgrade strength, it just helps with the things up there, I might end up getting intelligence, so I could get two skill points and then spend it on power draw because then I will be able to use better bows and stuff I'm not sure I don't want to spend on that I don't think not that make sure this persuasion thing is somewhat useful but I don't know like I th noticed it became more useful in Fire and Sword because some of the things that you could get as task from different lords were things like to they say oh well I loan this guy 3,000 gold and I want my money back so go tell him that I want my money back and so you go tell him and they say okay well he wants his money back and the guy will be like well I don't know you well enough to give you the money so why should I and you say something like you could try to persuade him which 
what happens is the king will go, or whoever gives you the task will say, okay, well, I'll give you like a fifth of what it is, or how much he's going to give me if you go and get my money back. So you say, okay, well, when you go do that, the guy that I don't know you well enough, so I'm not going to. You try to persuade him. When you persuade him, there's a chance that you can actually persuade him to give you the money. And, like, there's, like, the options are you say, okay, well, never mind. Or you can try to persuade him. Or you say, okay, well, I'll give you the money that I was going to get for doing this. So then you end up getting no money out of it. Or you could try to persuade him if you do it correctly. You don't have to pay as much money. But if you do it wrong, then you have to pay more money. And so that's one of the things that it's bad to try if you don't have enough persuasion yet. But anyways, I think I'll go, or I'll at least put one there, I guess. It'll give me a more variety of bows and stuff I could use. I don't think I'm going to use anything in that yet. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do looting anymore because it seems to just give you, if it's you're going against crappy people, it'll just give you more crappy items. Um, spotting that is somewhat useful for when you're trying to, to do attacking and stuff like that if you're chasing down someone. Um, I forget who it is, but there's someone in this that's supposed to be like a, he's kind of like a hunter guy who he does, he has really good tracking and pathfinding and spotting, I think, I believe. Maybe it was just tracking and pathfinding. But either way, he's like really good at that stuff. I'm going to try to find him because that's what all the little follower people like the Mathard are like. You, like Mathard, she's meant to be a fighter person, so she's going to have like high attack and stuff like that um i'm not sure what i'm going to make my person be yet i really need to find a medic person but i can't remember um what their names were i remember one of them was supposed to be like a gypsy person and they were giving like luck charms to people and stuff or no i'm thinking fire sword okay my bad there's supposed to be some gypsy person in fire sword that I had that she ended up giving someone a good luck charm and by giving them a good luck charm, they started panicking, saying she was a witch and she needed to be burned and stuff. So, I don't think there's anyone like that in this game, because Fire and Sword has guns and it's supposed to be a later date. But I guess, like, this is the time where they would, I guess it takes place in a time where there was probably law burning saying that they were witches or something. But, I'm not sure, I can't remember if that stuff happened over in the Europe. I'm trying to remember in my one history classes I just remember since it's over here in one America is where I'm at um, that I remember parts for American part of the history more and I'm trying to remember there's something about the, I remember them burning people around here and they were really big on it and stuff like that around here I'm pretty sure there was over there because, I mean, if people think there's a witch, they're going to get rid of them to try to avoid having, just in case if anything does happen, they don't want it to happen to them kind of thing. But anyway, I might end up getting this. I'm not sure. I mean, increases the party morale. And reduces the wage of troops, which at this moment I think the highest at the pay is like maybe 10 or something like that. So just taking it down 5% to only go to take like, I don't know, like two denier off. But I mean, it's, I don't know, it might help out, I guess. And I put a lot of them one hand sword. I know that there was something about like you slowly learn more of the one handed sword stuff and if when you're using it and so I heard that it's, it's better to just put it all into something you don't ever use like pull arm I'm only going to use when I do training at the training camps 
and throwing or just going I probably will never use because I, I don't really like or I never really used to front throwing items and I don't think I ever will the only time I ever used it was in tournaments when they had the javelins but anyways let's go talk to the king again let's see what he does I feel bad for the king he had all his guys beside him only thing that happened was villagers joined my side <laughs> Normally, whenever I go talk to the king, he has people beside him. Everybody just starts flipping out. They're just saying all sorts of stuff. I expect to see something about his family, but it seems that he doesn't really have a family. And I gotta watch out for um, what's his name? Um, let me look it up. Go back down to. Lady Timothy, or Timothy, whatever it was, Timothy, Timothy, sounds like a guy's name, it makes me kind of think twice about it, but it was just one of the first people I saw, but this guy, he's mad at me, because <laughs> when, I, when I started talking to the girl, I didn't ask him for permission first, so he's mad at me, so the Kurnius, I think he's here too, let's find him. Maybe he's not. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's mad at me. <laughs> May I ask you, <laughs> may I have the honor of visiting your sister? Which will probably end with him being even more mad. Let's find out. Yep. He says, I've already spoken to her without his permission. And he will not be walking behind his back, so yeah, he's getting more mad. Oh, now he's even suspicious of me. Um, I'm assuming the guys are done with this thing. Maybe not. Okay, wait, is the king up there? Oh, the king's starting to read this place. For some reason, I thought there were one meeting thing was over I was gonna be like now he just left all these guys out here in the middle of the desert area which could be a good tactic on I remember one time when I was playing on the other person that I have on Mountain Blade I was somewhere up this way I think I just took I just took out this for my other game and I was moving down this way and because I was chasing some guy and I took him out about here and then I said okay well I'm done with the campaign and all the little purple up here that goes down to here and I believe this castle was mine in the other game that castle and like this whole land right here is mine and stuff and all this is mine so on the other game they only have like this itsy bitsy little place right here is all that's left of them and I ended up taking that guy here saying okay well I'm done for the campaign so you guys can leave so the guys scatter and so they decided they wanted money I guess and so I out of like the six people with me like three of them ran up this way and they started taking out the four or little places up here like that and that that and they so they're terrorizing their villages and stuff and I ended up following them around because they had like parties of 30 or 40 because they just got done to the castle and they were slowly healing up and I had a group of like 120 and we just took out, it was actually the Salton guy that we took out right here so we chased down so they, he had like a party of like 561 or something like that and so since we took him out they had all the laws left that was like little parties of like 30 or 40 and I think like I saw a group of 60 was the highest one and they were like hiding in these castles and stuff and I was so tempted of starting another campaign just to take out the castle I think because if you take out like one of these because we already had that place taken out if we took out that then he would have been this little itty bitty place there but I was kind of worried that I still have like no one at this fort on my other game, so I figured they'd all run up that way and take out that place. 
But anyways, I keep on getting off topic and stuff. Go back down here. Get people ready to upgrade. Um, I guess I'm... Let's go with Spearman, I guess. prisoners right now that I would get rid of but I kind of made these guys mad so um, won't be able to do that actually I'm gonna take over to what's going on it's a the serious are just suspicious with me I forget if you have to go with, like full out war on them uh, so, Swadia has now been attacked by Nords basically. I have a feeling that Swadia is not going to last long like the other game because, I don't know, it's surprisingly even though you'd think that they would have the upper hand having knights and really flat land, or at least it looks really flat from this point, you'd think they'd have the upper hand because the knights are the strongest, but for some reason they get taken out really fast. Okay, well, apparently the king has basically raided like three or four villages just to leave. Okay, well, everybody's running back. So, I think I'm gonna run to this place. Um,. I'm not sure how long I've been recording. I forgot to look, but um, I don't think it's been that long. I click and see. Um, uh, yeah, I don't see anything. Oh wait, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, so it's only been like 40 minutes. So, yeah. Um. So I'll probably go for maybe another, or I'll go for like another 20, and I might end up pre-recording episode 5 also. So then I will have that out of the way and won't have to be trying to do that some other time. Um, I might end up having, um, I don't know if anyone's ever going to the Twitch TV. But you do like live streams on there, and I'm thinking of doing some time doing a live stream of the Mountain Blade Word Band, and I guess it, if you've ever been there, I, I, there's a link on my YouTube page. You can go see my thing. I the only thing that's supposed to be on there is like I was testing out and did like a quick recording of the one little game on Marjong, but. I might end up trying to live stream this because this game goes on for a really long time. I'm gonna see if that one lady's here. Or she's at somewhere place. That's not her. Let's find out where she's at. That doesn't make sense. Oh. Oh, okay. So the nurse has snuck me in. Amazingly, all of a sudden everybody has left and so here's this person. <laughs> no, you can learn poets and or to sing or little poems to sing to her and depending on it she, she likes it or not. She would let you, um, or get more relationship with her.
thing that kind of confusing me is uh, the game has itself so it says the daughter of a good family I must protect my relation or my reputation but the problem is in this for some reason she doesn't have a father or mother or anything like that in the game she only has a brother so I guess, I guess there is family to it but she doesn't really have a father in it I guess they have the whole but I hope to see you again soon thing kind of makes it where she wants to I guess see me again the only thing is is when I do like a poster or something like that some people get mad <laughs> that's why her face is kind of creepy it reminds me of that show um, that old movie um, E.T. Her face kind of looks like E.T. Kind of has a long neck too. Kind of creepy. Anyways. Yeah, some of this is really high up. We get like a lot of money to buy those things. I think I'm sometime I'm going to end up switching over to having the bow and arrows and stuff. I think because even though these do a bit of damage, the speed to it just isn't really high up. Like I could shoot two arrows of this at the, about the same time it take to shoot one of those. And I'm guessing we get the two piercing damage, so I would just say double that and it'd be 42 versus the 37. So it kind of makes the boners more like it. But they have like the siege crossbow that takes a really long time to reload it and stuff. But the damage to it is at 63. And if you do hit someone with the arrow, it's like a one-hit kill. It's a really powerful thing, but you can't use it on horse, which is the other thing that kind of sucks. But just because you have it doesn't mean you can't ride a horse. You just can't use it at the moment, so you have it sitting on your back. And so I can like I hope and I might end up actually keeping crossbows and having one of those siege crossbows. Just in case if I want to use it, I just have to store it down there. But anyways, um, I guess continue to wonder about. I wonder if there's any more bands or anything like that. Um, let's see. Is there anything going on in the party? Um, oh yeah. I try to sell some of these prisoners so I don't have to have them slow me down if they actually slow you down I'm not sure but better safe than sorry kind of thing that's the kind of creepy look on his face one of the things I always like Find, find him. It's how you can sit there and you can kick these people and they don't seem to care. Punch them and you shoot them and they just don't seem to care. Um, let's see. One of the populace also is negative one because um it was negative two because the king asked me to collect taxes from this place and I ended up getting like a fifth of the price that's how I got a thousand or about a thousand gold because I got like some of it was because I've taken out the bandit camp I get buddy and the other part was because I got like something like 800 or it was maybe it was actually a thousand 
from that. But anyways, I think there's a king, so let's go talk to him and see if he has another task for me. He doesn't need help with his time. Oops, didn't mean to call it, but that, that's saying that if he, he has to do it, he says. What if there's any bandits down this way? Or looters and stuff. I noticed that looters seem to move much slower than bandits and stuff, so I kind of enjoy going after those more. If there's nothing around here. I think I might end up calling an episode right now and getting ready for next episode, which is episode 5. And I don't know, I'll be doing episode 5. Um, I probably will be simply trying to level up some people and I don't know, making the Seridids more mad by raiding a village possibly. Uh, it might be a good idea, like, go and collect all my troops. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll call it episode right here. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. If you're enjoying series stuff, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. They have, it's really nice stuff to have subscribers and stuff showing that people are actually join the series and enjoy watching videos and stuff. Um, so... I guess see you guys next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.